Hey guys, it's Mr. AJ's Tech here, and take a view of my uh, Quick Toggles app. And uh, this is actually my own app. Uh, this was accepted into the Mac App Store, and I'm selling this for two dollars. And uh, what this will allow you to do is actually get uh, access system tasks right by the status bar on your Mac. So this does support Snow Leopard and Lion. Uh, it also does support Mountain Lion uh, if people are on the beta. Um, there are a few issues with the free RAM uh, uh, toggle. But um, there will be some uh, updates later when Mountain Lion, of course, does come out. So Quick Dogs will allow you to do a lot of system tasks like hide applications, freeing RAM, and even seeing system info. Uh, and you can also control iTunes right from it. So it actually is very uh, good. And um, I actually use it myself. So I developed it so that I could use it myself. And uh, the idea kind of was inspired by uh, City Tweaks that do kind of similar things like show uh, CPU usage, allow toggling on and off of things. And I hope to implement more as I get reviews back from the uh, from people who are actually using the application. So uh, you can go ahead and uh, load up the Mac App Store on your Mac, and you can just go ahead and search Quick Toggles. Uh, so very simple as that, and uh, this is $2. So once you do that, you're gonna want to go over to Launchpad, and you will have the Quick Toggles app right here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. So right away, when you see Quick Toggles, it will show this window right here. And uh, this actually is just a will, little welcome window. And what this will allow you to do is set a toggle right here. So this will allow you to enable it so that it opens on startup. So essentially, uh, the, the idea is that uh, the uh, toggles will always be accessible by the uh, status bar. So that's why uh, this is really nice to have. So you're going to want to check that on. That way, it's always there. So you can always access these things. So you don't have to open the application then access these things. By then, the time uh, kind of difference doesn't really work. So we're gonna go ahead and dismiss this window, and then we can actually just go up here and see that we have the two uh, um, wrenches, and then you, we will have the hide all and show all function, which I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up. Let's say we have all these windows scattered, and it doesn't have to be the same application. Let's just go ahead and open up a different uh, browser, open up iChat, and uh, you can see all these things are just stacked, and this is just a mess of my desktop. Let's say I just need to go to Finder. Let's just click Hide All, and we can actually hide all these windows just with a simple click of the button. And if we want all those windows back, we can go ahead and click Show All. So uh, this will uh, bring up all these windows, which is pretty annoying, but you can do that. And uh, so that's what... That's the main idea behind this. That was one of the ideas I had a long time ago in an application, but just that alone in an application wouldn't uh, do it. The next thing is that you can clear the DNS cache. This is good if you're having issues loading websites. Let's say you have a uh, bad cache and uh, you just need to clear that uh, cache. That's usually good when you're diagnosing uh, website issues. Website is not loading for you, but it's loading for your friend. You know, that kind of stuff. The next toggle is free RAM, which actually frees up a lot of RAM. I'll show you that uh, later. Uh, you can use that through system info. You can view your RAM stats. And then you, after using the free RAM toggle, you can go ahead and check uh, what's going on there. So the free RAM is a really great uh, thing. And all of these things are just easily accessible because you just click over here and you click on the toggle so it just executes that the next part right here is we have the local IP and public IP you can see that my I public IP is covered up but it will get your public IP so you can actually access that very easily the next part is you have CPU stats so CPU stats is very simple you it shows uh, what the current usage is and uh, this is actually taken right from the shell script uh, so this is exactly what terminal outputs when you use the command top it just parses that string um, but that is how it gets that that is complete and accurate information right from the uh, terminal command. The next part is we have RAM stats. So you can see that we have 590 megabytes out free because uh, this computer only has four gigabytes of RAM. So it is definitely nice to have the free RAM toggle when you have a lower end machine. So we're going to go over here and we're going to hit the free RAM. And you can tell it's still uh, using the command because the it is blue up there. Once the blue uh, kind of leaves it, like leaves from there, you know that the command uh, finished. So we're just going to go ahead and open up the uh, window again. We're going to go back to CP, uh, system info then back to RAM stats you can see that we have 780 megabytes free the reason why it's not clearing up so much is because we still have uh, quite a bit open so if we go ahead and close a few windows 
And uh, the other thing is I'm screen recording uh, via ScreenFlow. That takes up quite a bit of memory. But if we go ahead and close out a few of these windows, obviously this will cut out on some uh, RAM. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take uh, Firefox out of here. And uh, let's go ahead and execute that free RAM again. So now you can see that we have the blue again, and then let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, there is a timer, so it, it updates that info every five seconds, so it doesn't use too much memory. But now we, you can see that we have 1478 megabytes free. So that definitely is a really great thing to have. To be able to free up that RAM, so sometimes when you start up a virtual machine and you need to clear up that RAM, you can go ahead and do that after you shut down your machine. So the other thing is we have iTunes implementation, so you can play, pause, skip, and then this iTunes is not playing actually gets the current song so let's go ahead and open up my iTunes library and you will be able to go ahead and see that it updates as soon as the uh, the um, iTunes starts playing so let's go ahead and open up my iTunes let's say we go over here and uh, we'll just play a random song so I'll let that song start and then you'll see right here so now my application will go ahead and automatically detect that you are playing uh, music so we'll just click up here and we'll go over to the iTunes part and then it will go ahead and show you the current song that is playing so right there you can see that the, the reunion is uh, playing and that is what that is right there so you can go ahead and see that we can skip it so we just went to the next song and I'll it, there usually is a blue part right here where the uh, the quick toggles icon is. That tells you that the command is still going. So that is really cool. And then we can pause it as well. The next part is you can go ahead and use uh, app shortcuts. So we're just going to hide the iTunes window. You can see how that hide uh, function is sometimes pretty useful. And so we go ahead and do that. And then we have the app shortcuts so we can open up system preferences very easily. We just open up system preferences. It's fully accessible. Then we can go back over to our quick toggles menu and we can go ahead and access the internet. So this will detect what your native uh, browser is. So whatever default browser you have, it will go ahead and load that up. Next one we have is mail. I'm not gonna open up mail because it's on my other screen. And then we have a text edit which will open up a new text edit document. So right there we have text edit. It opens up a new text document and it's very simple. Um, and then the last part is we have the about application and then this just shows what the version is. And then the last thing is we have the actual preferences which we'll add more and that brings up the uh, welcome slash preferences window. So overall this uh, application actually has a lot into it. I spent uh, well over 24 hours of straight uh, computer programming on th this. Um, I spent a lot of time and I really hope that uh, a lot of people start using this. I think that is definitely an application that is usable in uh, both user or advanced users uh, to use this because you can use it to free up RAM, make your computer faster. That's that's all RAM freeing RAM is. It just frees up the memory and so that you can make your computer faster. So that was my review or overview of the Quick Toggles app. You can pick it up in the Mac App Store. It is $2. Uh, so guys, anyways, rate, comment, and subscribe and check out more from i2week.tv.